Breaking news, and this is real news. An unusual object is about to re-enter Earth's atmosphere between May 8 and May 11 of this year. And it's on a collision course with Earth, possibly even your house. And it's not a question of if it will impact the Earth, but where it will hit. Is your city or house in the path of this potentially destructive UFO? Find out next on Maximus. This is Maximus. Well, an old Soviet spacecraft circling Earth for 53 years now has given up its will to live. And is finally set to re-enter our atmosphere between 8 May and 11 May 2025. The extremely heat-resistant Soviet spacecraft Cosmos 482 was launched on March 31, 1972 on a mission bound for Venus. However, after a successful launch to a temporary orbit around the Earth, a problem with the timer aborted an engine burn prematurely. So the spacecraft was unable to break free of Earth's gravitational grip, where it's been circling the Earth now for 53 years. So what do we know? Well, we know this little former Soviet Union Venus-bound spacecraft is coming back home. The problem is we don't know where. But Maximus, I hear you say, it's kind of a small object. Why should we worry about it? And you would be right, potentially. However, this is what I call a lottery meteoroid. You know, when you play the lottery, the odds are you'll never win. However, a few people always win, so it's a matter of beating the odds. Scientists who've been tracking Cosmos 482's orbital height recently said it's been gradually spiraling lower and lower and should re-enter the atmosphere sometime between May 8 and May 11. Researchers at one satellite tracking station in the Netherlands have pinpointed a most likely date of May 10. Experts say this one-ton object could hit practically anywhere on Earth, explaining that it's too soon to narrow down the landing zone. But there is a very small chance that Cosmos 482 could crash land in a populated area, potentially slamming into someone's front yard, smashing through a roof, or even injuring someone. Harvard University astronomer and astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell, who spoke to the Daily Mail so you know it's got to be true, said if this were to cause damage or worse to hurt someone, that would be something that the Russian government will be liable for. Really, Professor? I'm pretty sure Russia won't care. Nevertheless, he identified this gradually descending object in 2000, determining that it was most likely the separated reentry capsule from the Cosmos 482 spacecraft. Still not worried, you say? Well, to that, I have just two words for you. Ann Hodges. Who is Ann Hodges? Well, she's a woman who won or lost the space lottery back in 1954, depending on your point of view. On November 30, 1954, 34-year-old Ann Hodges experienced a rude awakening. As she lay napping cozily under quilts on the sofa in her Alabama home, she became the only human known to have been injured after being struck by a meteorite. The approximately 8.5-pound, 4.5-billion-year-old interplanetary traveler shot like a bullet through her roof at 2.46 p.m. It banged into her large radio console and bounced onto her voluptuous body causing a large bruise on her left side. Moving at approximately 200 kilometers per hour, the meteor lit up the sky in parts of Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi. Hodges' neighbors reported seeing a bright reddish light crossing the sky, kind of like a Roman candle trailing smoke, they said. Others said they saw a fireball like a gigantic welding arc. The meteorite has become popularly known as the Hodges meteorite. While Hodges is the only human known to have been injured by a meteorite impact, a cow in Venezuela died after being pummeled by an unearthly rock in 1972. Another meteorite in February 2013 created a sonic boom, of course, that broke windows and scattered debris, causing injuries to more than 1,000 people in Russia. There was also an unconfirmed report in 2016 that a bus driver in India suffered fatal injuries after being hit by debris ejected when a meteorite hit the ground. And despite social media claims of being struck by a meteorite in the 21st century, none have been confirmed. So like I said, nobody ever wins the lottery, but somebody always wins the lottery. But those past strikes I just mentioned were caused by natural meteorites. In this case, however, it's a man-made object that's headed for Earth. The main body of the Russian spacecraft fell back to Earth in 1981 and likely burned up in the atmosphere as it has never been recovered. But its re-entry capsule, which was ejected into higher Earth orbit during the launch, has remained in space. This capsule was supposed to make it to Venus, where it would attempt to enter the planet's atmosphere and crash land on the surface. And that's what makes it more dangerous than other man-made debris that's fallen back to Earth. 
That's because it is equipped with a heat shield designed to prevent it from burning up when it enters Venus' atmosphere. But because it never made it to Venus, the shield is likely still intact, and it could allow the capsule to survive a fall through Earth's atmosphere. That's why scientists expect this object to crash land on our planet, and yes, maybe even your house. So when the Cosmos 482 capsule re-enters Earth's atmosphere at 17,000 miles per hour, it will be a burning fireball, surrounded by a shock wave as the atmosphere compresses beneath the force of its fall. Friction between the capsule and atmosphere and particles will eventually slow its descent to a couple of hundred miles per hour. And while the vehicle was equipped with parachutes for its descent to Venus, scientists say that it's not completely impossible that the parachute system it had to land on Venus is going to operate. However, the odds are that it won't, and so experts say that it's just going to slam into the ground, comparing it to a car falling out of the air at 100 to 200 miles per hour. So it doesn't destroy a city, a block, or anything like that. But if it lands on your house, or worse, on you, well, that's not going to be a good day. That's going to leave a mark, as they say. Still keeping with the lottery analogy, the odds of Cosmos 482 actually hitting you or your home are incredibly slim. However, speaking of slim... Just ask the Ruben S. and Hodges about slim chances. Experts say if you land something in a random part of the Earth, the chance that it hits a person is about 1 in 10,000. And that's because most of the Earth is not covered with people even today. So they say the chance that it hits you is more like 1 in 10 billion, even smaller than that. So you probably don't have to lose any sleep over this. Or do you? However, it wouldn't be the first time that Space Chunk has crash-landed in someone's community. In March 2024, a smartphone-sized piece of junk from space jettisoned from the International Space Station failed to burn up during its descent through Earth's atmosphere, falling through the roof of a home in Florida, because of course it was Florida. It was a tremendous sound. It almost hit my son, the homeowner said. He was two rooms over and he heard it. Also, just a few months after that incident, much larger pieces of debris from a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft landed near a mountaintop resort in North Carolina, though that incident didn't cause any damage or injuries. Still, scientists aren't even sure if this object is the Russian craft, but even if it is Cosmos 482, it's also possible the capsule's 50-year-old heat shield won't survive the descent as it wasn't designed to be in space for this long. However, experts still expect the heat shield will in fact hold up. That's because it's dense enough and massive enough that the chance that it will burn up completely is low. Thus making it very likely it will be largely intact until the moment it hits the ground. There are about 3,000 dead satellites like Cosmos 482 currently orbiting the Earth. According to the European Space Agency, some of these objects could eventually pose a risk to human safety. Harvard astronomer and astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell says that he thinks the larger objects or the objects that provide more of a risk, because like this object, they have a heat shield, he says you'd really rather not have them re-entering uncontrolled. Well, that's a Captain Obvious right there for you. That's why scientists are testing out strategies to bring these objects back to Earth safely, instead of letting them plummet through the atmosphere on their own. Some ideas are kicking around include fleets of space garbage trucks, spacecraft that are able to collect dead satellites and other forms of orbital debris, and return them to our planet for disposal. McDowell explained, concluding, that I think the time has come to start the cleanup, he said. Well, how about that? So don't forget to set a reminder on your calendar for the days of May 8th through the 11th. Keep your head on a swivel. Or better yet, if you have a doomsday bunker, hunker down and be on the lookout because the Russians are coming back. <laughs>